Welcome to Beauty and the Brain with your hosts, Dr. Chris Crowley and nurse practitioner Jerry Drinker. Get ready to dive into the latest in revolutionary treatments, cutting edge devices, and wellness secrets. Whether you're a consumer or provider, we're here to empower you at the forefront of beauty and aesthetics. Pucker, relax. Pucker, relax. You ready? All right, let's go. Three, two, one. Let's do it. <laughs> Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Beauty in the Brain, the podcast where we talk about all things aesthetic. I'm your co-host, Dr. Chris Crowley. And I'm Jerry Drinker, family nurse practitioner, and together Chris and I own Skin and Tonic, med spa that's located in Pace, Florida. If you want to go and see that intro there on YouTube, go in and check out our YouTube channel where we have these podcasts. You'll see that we are practicing a few of our facial yoga, facial exercise um, movements that we're going to talk about on the podcast today. And this is like something that's new, but not new, and interesting, but not interesting. <laughs> and Chris is apparently trying it out. Yeah, I think it's um, I think it's fascinating. I don't think I would be compliant and do this long term, but I, I love the idea of facial exercise, facial yoga. This is kind of a uh, trending topic right now. It's really popular on TikTok. A lot of people are doing these types of exercise obviously is a means to anti-aging. So rather than doing all the toxins and fillers and those sorts of things, people are trying to work out their facial muscles, tone their facial muscles to have, uh, you know, a more tight, a lifted appearance, maybe smoother appearing wrinkles, which goes kind of counter or opposite to everything that we've really worked in our career in aesthetics, really. We've been doing this now, you and I, um, uh, 16 years. And we've always been taught to like, put a little bit of neurotox and Botox or Dysport and stop something from moving, relax that muscle to relax the wrinkle. And now we're doing things to strengthen those muscles and to build those muscles. What's your thoughts on it? I think over the next 10 years, we'll see the whole aesthetics industry change a lot. I think we'll probably continue to see the neurotoxin, but I think we'll see a lot less of traditional dermal fillers. People think about it, the hyaluronic acid fillers, the biostimulants. I, I look for those to just really explode. And so I think that is even, a, even though it's not natural, it's a little more natural approach. And so I can completely see where a health driven, you know, community would like to do something more natural for the face. So the, whether or not it works, I, I can't attest to because I'm certainly not that dedicated, but I would say that I can see where people would do it to, to give it a whirl. It's not really a brand new concept. Um, when it was brought to our attention that people wanted us to talk about it and that um, I started looking it up a little bit, it was interesting to see that this has been around for a while. And in fact, seven or eight years ago, there was a study that came out on it and they were looking at it and they did see some mild improvement in uh, sagging and some jowling. But that was after people did this daily for 30 minutes for 20 weeks. So I mean, if you really think about that, to just get some very mild improvement, you're going to have to be very committed. And that's five months of daily 30 minute dedicated facial exercises to get some very mild improvement. I don't know many people that are that dedicated. I don't know many people that have that kind of time to, to dedicate to that. I think about like just the five minutes, five times a day for five days massages we do with sculpture. That's pretty like, it's hard to be compliant for me. It's hard to even be compliant with that. But you know, the, the other thing is we talk about anti-aging and lifting and you know, maintaining a youthful appearance. And regardless of what part of the body we are talking about this in, the big thing is blood flow. And so, you know, facial stimulation and exercise and whether you're using like some of the stones that are out there that are very popular, especially in Asian culture that have been around for years and years, all of those things stimulate blood flow and, you know, which then just like encourage a healthy tissue. So I, I do think it probably works. Yeah, it's not a totally, like I said, the concept is interesting to me because we've always been taught to relax muscles to smooth wrinkles. And so I believe maybe what we're seeing now with this trend is there is a, perhaps some confusion behind wrinkles and overall skin quality and maybe some lifting that we get from maintaining muscle tone. Because as the muscles lose their tone, we keep them relaxed. Definitely, it's not they're not going to do what they would normally do they're going to sag things are going to droop a little bit 
So um, certainly if we can somehow stimulate those muscles and keep those muscles pulled tight, we probably, I can see, I agree with you that we would have some mild effect. But I think from a patient standpoint, they have to understand that's not necessarily the same thing as treating textural issues on the skin. So fine lines, wrinkles, uh, probably we're going to need to consider something else. We talk about this a lot. Um, I've met Sierra and I even talked about it earlier this morning about patients with facelifts. Take that, for instance, where, you know, the skin is actually removed and pulled tight. If it's not a good quality skin, you still don't get the result that a lot of people want. And I mean, how many patients do we have that we've seen that have been dissatisfied with cosmetic surgery? And it's not because of necessarily the the quality of surgery they had but the quality of skin that they started with prior to having the surgery. So I'm surprised you hadn't reeled me back in because I'll go down a rabbit hole about it. <laughs> You're but, way off topic. <laughs> I'm way off topic. We'll get back to your stones and facial massages and all that. But I do think it's really important to start with a good quality skin, regardless of what you're doing, so that you'll have the best result. Yeah. So I think you got on that a uh, little bit of a tangent because you're talking about... Uh, we, we can call it a reposition. tangent. <laughs> we can reposition tissue through facelifting. And so a way that we're talking about this today is how do we tighten muscles in there? So there are a lot of muscles in the face that are responsible for different movement. So then our forehead, that's where we typically look at a muscle called the frontalis. It elevates, it lifts our brows. It's the only thing that keeps the brows elevated. And so um, there's, you know, different ways that we can stimulate that. But as that muscle moves, kind of the, the folds within that muscle is where we'll see lines and wrinkles. So a lot of people don't like lines and wrinkles, and we always have to tell them as they get older. And so our patients in their 70s and 80s, if we do um, a lot of uh, neurotoxin or Botox up in that area, then they get a trade off that they're not going to have as much of a brow lift as they may want. And so when we're doing a lot of these facial exercises or facial gymnastics or facial yoga, there's all these different terms, but they're basically ways that you can either really exaggerate and repeat certain muscle movements, or you can use your your hands to massage and to stimulate those movements. As we move down into the lower face, we're usually talking about muscles that kind of control our smile. So our zygomat zygomaticus major and minor, and there's um, you know different ways that we can really repeatedly exaggerate our smile, relax, exaggerate it and relax to try to get those muscles to really pull up. And uh, you guys can see some of the, the examples of that. We'll splice in with this on our YouTube channel if you wanna go and, and check it out over there. We'll show you some facial uh, exercises that you can try at home if you wanna do this. I think the other thing is that you have to have some understanding of anatomy for this to work. Because if someone goes and strengthens the DAOs, for instance, or are they going to have more? What's the DAOs for? The, because remember, people are listening. So what? Uh, so the, it's a muscle that we treat with neurotoxin to relax it, so that you don't have a downward turned smile. So it's a muscle kind of in the corner of the mouth, and it pulls it down. So some people tell us they feel like they're frowning all the time, even when they're not upset. And if we strengthen that muscle, it could actually make that problem worse. Yeah. So is it going to make that problem worse? And so. You know, I, I don't think that that you can just go and make these repeated, exaggerated expressions and get a result that's necessarily desirable. Personally, like I said, I don't have a ton of knowledge about it, but it seems to me that if you did exercise in the wrong way, you could probably cause as much harmful results as you could beneficial results. And so that's why I say, like, it seems like you'd have to have some type of understanding of how the anatomy works. You'd want to strengthen the muscles that lift and raise and not strengthen the muscles that are the depressors and cause, you know, the fears to droop. Right. And I think the reality is that we don't have a lot of people seeing results one way or the other. One, they may not know the ones to um, exercise, but if they follow the instructions, my guess is most people are not that consistent with it. So the interesting thing is that has led to the concept behind this, at least, has led to a kind of an explosion in our energy-based devices with things that we can do to kind of accelerate those results. So things that we wouldn't normally be able to do just by exercise alone. So we saw this in the body when we did things for, you know, abs and butts and arms and legs. And now they've built devices that we can do similar for the face and neck. Um, I've been having some of those treatments. And so I actually personally have loved it. Um, so I, I've been going over to a provider in Crestview, um, the, the view uh, med spa over on Main Street and Crestview has been absolutely uh, wonderful uh, to me as a patient. Their staff is great. Lauren is one of their nurses. She is phenomenal with the, the treatments if any of you guys want to go check them out over there. 
But this is a device that uh, the one I've been doing over there is called M-Face. And with the M-Face, it's very similar to the M-Sculpt. So it's us using uh, radio frequency and um, electrical stimulation to work out those muscles. So you're getting thousands of contractions of that muscle uh, stronger than you would be able to contract it in a short 20 to 30 minute period. And so repeated uh, applications of that will, uh, you know, reportedly give you a little bit more defined jawline, lift your cheeks um, a bit. And you can also put it on your forehead for uh, a bit of a brow elevation or you can um, put it on your neck. And I think I was one of the first patients that they actually um, treated the neck on with this uh, device and they kind of put it under your chin. It's a bit odd, and um, I, I'm going to send Sierra some links so uh, during this section you guys can, can see me getting the treatment. You'll see how it's stimulated. It's kind of interesting to see the process, and it takes maybe about somewhere around two to three months after your treatments are done to see the results. So I'm kind of in that phase where I'm starting to see some results. Again, it may just be placebo, but I'm very happy with it. I don't know if you can tell a different. I haven't had that, but I did have the M sculpt, which was mildly uncomfortable. I thought, how is the M face? Is it similar? Or? No, the first time it was a little bit uncomfortable on the forehead. Um, but when I say a, a little, um, you know, and a lot of people out there listening know that I'm a, such a, a wimp when it comes to these treatments. <laughs> I'm the biggest baby. We we always joke. Um, we have laughing gas and in, in our practice. And we always say, when I get a treatment, I, we need to split that hose in half, half for Jerry or Allie who's treating me and half for me to get the treatment because really I'm, I'm not an easy patient. But this has been surprisingly tolerable. And then so I would say on a scale of one to 10, like a one or a two the first time I got it on my forehead. And after that, it's literally been like a zero or one. It's an odd sensation. You can feel it tightening the muscles, but it's not any pain at all. And, and so I've been very comfortable with the treatment. I did a series of four on my forehead, and then I opted to stop at that point. Again, we keep that muscle relaxed a lot, and, and some of their studies show that your neurotoxin treatment doesn't like kind of interfere with that result. So maybe it maintains some of the muscle mass. I'm not quite sure about that. But um, after that, I opted just to go with my mid-face, and we're working on uh, tightening up a little bit under my neck. And and so, you know, that's been a, a pretty cool process to, to, you know, kind of watch how it works and see how it happens. You know, another thing is during that time I've been dieting, and so I've lost a lot of weight. I'm right at 50 years old. And so weight loss on someone in our age bracket is kind of hard on your face because it really will deflate it and, and sag a lot. So I think the other thing is we're helping mitigate some of those, that sagging that I would have from all that drastic weight loss. I, I've definitely seen a big result. Like I don't see a huge change in your face from the weight loss, which is like pretty uncommon considering you've lost like 20 pounds or so. And so that's one of those things that a lot of times by someone reaches that point of weight loss, you would be seeing some hollowness. And so like your cheeks still seem lifted, like you, your skin looks really fresh. And I know you've done several things recently. I would, would like to think that you're probably starting to see some of the results from, from this. Certainly more pricey than, you know, uh, some of the stone tools that you can use at home or the the exercises you can do for, for free at the red lights or whatever. But also, like, you don't have to do it for hours on end to get these results. Yeah. And again, all those uh, therapies kind of do different things. We just lost a whole bunch together. And, but blood flow is kind of one of the common denominators with the exercises and the M face is really designed at muscle stimulation and muscle tightening. So from the blood flow, you may get a little bit of um, improved skin texture, skin tone. What I didn't mention is during all of that, I'm also doing another treatment. When I go there, it's one of their devices called Exion. It's radio frequency and I've done sculpture. So I've done other things to help with the skin texture and tone. So I don't want, want to confuse anybody that they think that that alone is going to help with all those other issues. But one of the things I haven't tried, and we have it in our office, and it, it's fascinating. I don't know if you've tried it yet or not, but um, we have a device called the E, and we we love that device. I mean, so it's a, a, a and from Emergent MedTech is who our d distributor is, who we've worked with, and uh, it has a um, hydrodermabrasion portion to it where we're doing a dermabrasion and um, putting in an, a, one of their um, proprietary solutions that's really great to nourish the skin. But it also has this electrical uh, current for electrical micro stimulation of muscles that is the same concept. We're stimulating the muscles for lifting. So have you had a chance to try it yet? 
I've not tried it, but we have, it's one of our very popular uh, treatments with patients. Lindsay does a lot of it and patients continue to come back asking for more. So maybe I'll put that on my list for the week. Yeah, I know it's hard for us to, to do these things, right? We work all day and by the end of the day, we, we don't really feel like going and doing a personal treatment. It's kind of ready to get home. I know. The device gets great reviews. And like you said, I know our patients love it and are happy with it. And so we, we should try it out for sure. So all of these things, they're kind of like Kegels for your mouth hole. Oh my Lord. I can't believe you just said that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I would not describe it as that, <laughs> but they're exercise. Tight and relax. Tight and relax. Yeah. Maybe for your face, not for your, your mouth hole. <laughs> That's such a technical term we're using today. Yeah, if you guys go and see, I'm probably red as a beat right now on the on the YouTube. So anyway, this this is kind of an interesting, uh, you know, concept. I will be uh, fascinated to see a few years from now if this is something that's just trendy or if it's something that we're going to see more device development into this area. Certainly, the muscles have not been an area that we've targeted with a lot of our energy treatments or a lot of our um, other types of med spa treatments. The exercises have been around for a while. I think people have always been interested in things they can do to maintain a lift without having to undergo a surgical procedure. But in the aesthetics and med spa industry, for many years, we focused on just textural issues, things for, um, you know, looking more a brighter skin, having a glow to your skin. But we didn't really focus on that muscle layer. It is fascinating that now we're seeing devices kind of come into this space that are looking at ways to stimulate the muscles. And so, uh, you know, we really have things now that we can target the muscle, the fatty tissue, the subdermal plane, the epidermis. And so we can go really from all the way deep in your face, all the way up to the most superficial layer to help uh, rejuvenate you. So I think that gets back to your original statement. We are seeing a shift in aesthetics more from this um, field where we're just filling up a hollow with a gel filler or freezing a muscle with Botox um, to this uh, bioregenerative approach. We're using the body's own ability to kind of age at a more graceful or slower pace. Does the M face, does it go as deep as the SMAS? Is that? Well, you're, it depends. It's not the depth of it, right? Because we're targeting. So that's not one that we're adjusting the depth. You're targeting a particular muscle. Okay. So it's more placement of the electrodes and how you're stimulating the muscles transcutaneously than necessarily the depth of it. So the SMAS is a, is a um, muscle layer for those of you that are listening to the podcast, and we're not necessarily targeting that. We're targeting specific muscles with okay. the m -base. depending on what they're treating with it. And the forehead, for instance, are targeting the frontalis, and so they will adjust that based on how the electrode position. So they'll move it up and down, and so as they're doing your cheeks or the side of your, your face, and they're um, trying to get the zygomaticus, You'll notice that the, the, it, when you look at my treatment, that they have to adjust the pads a little differently on one side than the other to get the targeted muscles. And, the, and again, it's a different one for the um, for the neck region as well. And so depending on which area they're treating, they target that specific muscle, which has a lot to do with their electrode or their pad placement. So they will move that up and down until they get the muscle stimulated that they want. Um, and you know from having another body, think about your... Um, when you're doing your abs versus your butt, those are all different depths and you don't really um, adjust a depth on there. You just adjust the uh, probe position to get the muscle stimulation that you want. The other devices are going at depth. So the, um, you know, the Exion, for instance, or Adidal Thera. So all of those, we do target different depths and we can get different results, but this is targeting a muscle, not necessarily a depth. Okay. All right. Well, everybody uh, follow us along and you can see my personal results. Um, we'll see if we have some patients that will let us put some photos up there. Also, maybe their Eve treatments and some immediate before and afters. Um, and then you can also see us being silly and doing some of the facial gymnastics. But you can rest assured I'm not doing that daily for five months for 30 minutes a day. You'll be in Crestview. I will be over at the View Med Spa in Crestview getting my M-Face treatment. So well, they've taken good care of you. They have. So again, thanks um, everyone over at the View Med Spa for taking such good care of me. Thank you guys for tuning in today for another episode of Beauty in the Brain, and we look forward to talking to you again next week. See you soon.